Hi, I'm John Pettuccino, Professor of Astronomy at College of the Redwoods. This YouTube series will cover material that we cover in our Introduction to Astronomy class, from a meteorite found in Antarctica from the planet Mars and the search for life, all the way through to supernovas and black holes. In our next segment, we'll talk a little bit more about what we think are the general requirements for life in the universe. Whether that meteorite from Mars, ALH 84001, had life in it or not is an open question. But the broader question is, what are the chances or what are the requirements for life in the universe? So we came up with a list and we discussed that list. What are the requirements for life? First, we decided that possibly we needed some sort of fluid in which the reactions could take place. We recognized that life is a set of chemical reactions, and so we decided that though water isn't the only possibility, it's probable that water is a good candidate uh, for the presence of life. So we're probably talking about liquid water, liquid H2O. So that requires a certain set of conditions. We also decided that we needed the right chemistry. So secondly, we need the right chemistry. And of course, that's the million dollar question. What is the right chemistry for life? But more than likely, that chemistry involves, for the reasons that we discussed previously, some amount of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and sulfur. Ask any biochemist and they will tell you that those five elements on Earth are the basis for life carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, nitrogen, and sulfur. Now, could life be based on something other than carbon? As we discussed, I'd love to say, sure, let's pick anything on the periodic table, but in reality, it has to have the same chemical uh, bonding that carbon does, and that severely limits things. More than likely, if it's not based on carbon, we're probably talking life based on silicon. So that says, or silicon. So I would say it's probably carbon-based, you say, wait a minute, carbon-based, that's exactly the same as us. No, well, that's not what I'm saying. I'm not even suggesting there's DNA. What I'm suggesting is, is that the base element of life is probably carbon. And that's good news, because carbon is more common in the universe than silicon. Uh, and the potential for silicon is there as well. Carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and sulfur. So we've got the right chemistry. We've got liquid water or some medium in which the reactions can take place. And then we need some sort of source of energy. Reel it back 50 years and biologists would have told you that the chemistry was sunlight. But in reality, that chemistry could be geothermal energy, it could be chemical energy like a battery uses, uh, it could be a host of different energy sources. So I'm just going to put in most general form that we need energy. And lastly, as we discussed in lecture, uh, I think we're going to need some amount of time. How long? We don't know. Okay. But there have been experiments done on Earth where the right ingredients were put together with water and, uh, and, and exposed to energy and heated up, and life didn't just spring from the pot. So we're not talking about minutes or seconds. We're probably talking about millions of years, if not potentially more than that. So we're going to need time, and what we're really saying when we need time is we're going to need stability. We're going to need some sort of environment even though it could definitely be argued that life needs to stir the pot from time to time in order to trigger new innovations and evolution, the reality is, is that you need some sort of stability in order for these reactions to take place in the first place. So, what we're looking for in our solar system and in the broader universe are places where these conditions exist and persist. Uh, and that led us to an interesting discussion of whether or not life uh, may have existed on early Mars. Perhaps, perhaps the meteorites suggest that. In fact, one of the more interesting points that we made during lecture was that it's possible that things could have been blasted off from one surface to another. So if there are Martian meteorites on Earth, there are certainly Terran or Earth meteorites on Mars. If that's the case, which is more likely? And we decided, because of the proximity to the Sun, that it's much easier for things to roll downhill, so to speak, and end up on the Earth than it is to roll uphill to Mars. So it's much more likely that life uh, travels from Mars to Earth. What is the potential for 
life traveling between planets. In fact, with the advent of things like tardigrades, or as we discussed them, water bears or moss piglets, uh, these creatures can live in outer space and have been seen to live outside the space station. So it's possible that life starts on one planet and moves to another. Maybe even possible that we are in fact all Martians, uh, a theory known as panspermia, the idea that life is actually traveling between planets. Could it travel between solar systems? As we discussed in class, probably not, because you're talking about time frames that are just outside the realm of possibility.